Imagine an aligned approach to the art of coaching, a perspective that blends both coaching and business mastery, all while honoring your vision, your values, and your intuition. Welcome to the Coach with Clarity podcast. I'm Lee Shea McDonough, an ICF credentialed coach, former therapist, and mentor for intuitive coaches and healers. I'll be your guide as you cultivate both the skill set and the mindset needed to transform your clients' lives and your own. Are you ready to be a coach with clarity? Then let's go. Well, hello, my friend, and welcome to the Coach with Clarity podcast. My name is Lee Shea McDonough. I'm your host, and today I have something very special to share with you. I had the privilege of interviewing Manasi Kagade, and I cannot wait to share our conversation with you. Manasi describes herself as a practical spirituality mentor. She is a speaker and a writer, and she serves those that she calls bridge walker visionaries. So a bridge walker is someone who is an analytical critical thinker who is also fascinated by spirituality. She sees us as being on the bridge between spiritual and material worlds. And our role is to help the planet thrive by collectively bringing in new systems and new structures that are rooted in love, kindness, and equality. And I am so excited by our conversation because we really dive into the intersection of spirituality and business and what that can look like, certainly within the coaching sphere, but really within entrepreneurship in general. This has always been an interest of mine. In fact, many of you know that my very first podcast, the Work Your Inner Wisdom podcast, explored that intersection of spirituality and business. So I kind of feel like I get to go back to my roots a bit with this interview with Manasi. It is thought-provoking, it is exciting, and I cannot wait for you to hear it. So that's enough for me. Let's dive in, and I am so proud to share my interview with Manasi Kakadi. Well, hello, my friend. Thank you so, so much for being on the Coach with Clarity podcast today. I am so thrilled to welcome you. It's a pleasure to be here. I've been waiting for this interview for quite some time. We have so much to talk about, but before we get into all of that, why don't we start off by having you share a little bit about who you are and the work that you do for the world. Mm -hmm. Hello, everybody. I'm Manasi Kakre, and I serve as a practical spirituality mentor and speaker for Bridgewalker Visionaries. Bridgewalkers are analytical, critical thinkers fascinated by spirituality and Bridgewalkers have a very specific purpose at this time on the planet, which is to merge the spiritual realm with the material, earthly, practical world. So I work with Bridgewalker coaches, healers, artists, and authors who are bringing out visionary messages and missions, and I help them heal themselves through practical business actions. So basically, I teach them how to use business actions as a healing modality, and As a byproduct of our work together, what happens is they end up bringing focus, fun, flow, and just overall alignment in their business. So they create a business strategy that is aligned with them. That is not something that they hear they should be doing. Sometimes they are the same, sometimes they aren't. But basically, when we understand what our energy is, what our unique way of being is, then our business simply becomes an expression of who we are. And I teach visionary entrepreneurs how to create those expressions in business by healing themselves and expanding into their dharma, which is their unique way of being. I am really excited to dive into that with you today because as a coach and as someone who trains coaches, the role of spirituality and energy and where it intersects with coaching and with business, I think is so important to unpack. And the work that you're doing is so powerful and so important. And so we're going to dive all into that in a bit. But before we do, I also know that you have an extraordinary story, really looking at everything that you've been through that's brought you to where you are right now at this point in time. And I would just love to hear more about how you came to be doing this important, powerful work with bridge walkers. What what brought you to this moment? This is so interesting because every time I go to share my story, I wonder where do I begin? Let me start by saying, if your listeners are familiar with human design, 
my human design profile is one three, meaning I'm an investigator and I'm an experimenter. So true to my nature, I have always experimented, meaning I have always taken risks. I have always made mistakes. And from those mistakes, I learned and tweaked my path. And what I didn't know is very early on, like even as a child, I wouldn't do anything that I don't like doing. So I was labeled as stubborn child. But where I was going is really, it was preparing me for the work that I'm doing now, where I was sensing what brings me joy, what doesn't. I was learning that. I was sensing what is in alignment and what isn't, what alignment means and what isn't. So when it came to my career, I'm a trained engineer. I did my bachelor's in India. I came to the US in 2003 to do my master's. I did my master's in electrical engineering. And then just at that last moment, I needed one credit hour to finish my graduation. And I thought, you know what, one credit hour, any engineering course for one credit hour isn't worth it. Let me do some easy course. And I did entrepreneurship. It was just a course where entrepreneurs will come and give a talk on how their journey was. And I was so inspired. And I realized what is more aligned with me is business and not just sitting behind the desk as an engineer. There are parts of engineering that I now bring in my work but they are just part of my energy that I just have, which is basically to build systems. But after doing that entrepreneurship class, I said, that's it. I need to get my business degree. Fortunately, I have been fortunate and to an extent privileged to have scholarships, to understand how to apply for them and to get them. I had scholarships to then continue in MBA. So I took my MBA and then I graduated in 2007 with both masters in electrical engineering and MBA. But the recession hit. So the recession of 2008, everybody would tell me that you are overqualified. Because according to them, I didn't have enough experience, but I had two master's degrees. Because I'm an immigrant in the United States, I need a certain type of permit that they need to pay you a certain amount to even prove that you are not exploited. So in the recession, I didn't get a job for two and a half years. Fortunately, at that time, I had enough savings where I could live off of it. But what that taught me was this understanding that life can bring curveballs to you that you never expected. I never expected I wouldn't have a job for that long. So then I started thinking, okay, I need to create something that is my own. So I had these ideas about entrepreneurship. I want to start a business at some point, but I was not taking any action because I was still afraid. I was still wondering what business would I start? So I didn't have any clarity about it. And finally, I ended up getting the job because Facebook had just come out when I was starting my engineering, actually. I was using Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter as a student. I knew how to use it very well. And by the time I got a job, there was a field like social media marketing that didn't exist before. So based on what my student experience was, I got a job. And once I got a job, I worked at that job until 2014. But in 2013, something happened that really shook me up, which was the death of my favorite aunt. She suddenly passed away. She was 58 years old, healthy, but she passed away in an accident. So it was so shocking for me. But immediately that induced this fear of death. And more so than fear of death, it was fear of dying without making an impact, that I realized that I have all these dreams, but I'm not doing anything to create those dreams. So in 2013, I went through this extreme phase of grief where I didn't know how to tackle that loss because she wasn't just an aunt to me. She was my trusted advisor. She was my spiritual guide. She was also like my second mother. So the loss was too It was too deep for me. I had lost grandparents before, but to age, not to an accident. I didn't even know how to grieve, really, to be honest with you. I didn't know that whole emotion as deeply. And what happened in two, three months of living in that, I realized that that fear of dying without making an impact was turning into an inspiration to live the life that I want. Because I realized that life is uncertain. Anything can happen at any time. So if I say that I want a certain kind of life, I want a business, then I cannot just sit back and do nothing about it. I have to do something. 
But at that time, I had no idea what to do. I knew one thing is even in all that grief, I knew that one thing that brought me peace was that I had talked to her and I had told her how much she means to me. And this was just a week before she passed away. So because there was that kind of closure, I said, why am I waiting to say this to other people in my life? And I wrote something called 11 Days of Gratitude, 11 Days of Thanksgiving, which was around the Thanksgiving in the United States. And I said, I'm just going to give thanks to all the people in my life for the impact that they have made in my life. My parents, grandparents, teachers, friends, cousins, mentors, all of them made the list. And what happened in that time was, first of all, my perspective changed. I went from grief to recognizing that I do have all these people in my life still, and I can celebrate and live a good life with them. And then second, what it did was I discovered my gift for writing. Because in those 11 days, there were friends. I was writing this on Facebook as like status updates. By the 11th day, there were people who were coming day after day just to read my posts. And these are just my friends, right? So after 11 days, they were the ones who were like, you're not going to stop writing, are you? And I was like, I didn't think about it, but guess what? I will continue writing. So I committed to writing every Monday, some Facebook update. So then about five, six months later, the post became popular enough where people wanted to share it outside of Facebook. So then I started a blog. This was in 2013. I was still working. But then in 2014, I was let go from my job. I didn't have a permit to start any business, but what happened was I was writing this blog and I realized it's bringing me joy. So I followed my joy, which was writing. I created a blog and about two years later, I got my first client through that blog based on what I was writing. And then finally, I got the permit that I needed to start my business. So my business started in 2016, November. Oh, wow. So we are five like years? celebrating yes. five year anniversary of my business right now, which is amazing That's to hear. Huge. Yeah, it is huge. But what happened then is in the first maybe one, one and a half years of my business, I realized quickly that I was becoming an employee of the business rather than the visionary behind it, rather than the CEO behind it. Yes. And I was working 12, 13 hours days and at that time, I interpreted that as I'm not moving forward fast enough. Now I know better to not interpret it like that. I was just exactly where I needed to be to learn what I needed to learn. But I was chasing all these shiny objects like six figures and for six months of your business or first year of business and million dollars in your next year or whatever. And I realized that I'm losing my joy. I'm losing my flow. I'm losing my fun and my fulfillment in the process of chasing a result. Yes. And yet I wanted to create results. So what is a good way of doing it? And that got me started to exploring spirituality. I have always been spiritual, but this got me exploring very specifically my money mindset. And because of that, I started recognizing what alignment is and what isn't. And through that, then through my own learning and through my own spiritual development, I started channeling what is my oversoul, meaning the part of me that knows quite a bit more than we give ourselves credit. And once I started channeling that, I recognized this ancient Indian system of seven chakra, which is a blueprint of reaching a human potential through spiritually aligning, energetically aligning with your truth, your dharma, meaning your unique way of being. So combining that ancient Indian wisdom with modern business strategies is what gave me not just prosperity and abundance in my business, but the joy and fulfillment of creative expression. And through that, then I started teaching what I do now, which is how to align your seven chakra and recognize your own patterns of imbalance and balance, and then recognizing which business actions are healing for you and which business actions are actually draining your energy. Because once I unlock that key, everything became easier. My previous experience earlier, I had money, but not fulfillment. Then I started having fulfillment, but not enough money. And now I have learned how to merge the two. And that's what I teach others. What an extraordinary story. Thank you so much for sharing that. And there were a couple things that really stood out to me. The first being 
how there were very noticeable pivot points in your journey where you made decisions. And the decisions that connected with your joy, with following your joy, were always the decisions that kind of led you into the next phase of your journey, whether that was taking that one credit entrepreneurial course that kind of set you off on a new trajectory, or whether it was deciding to move forward after the loss of your aunt, and then deciding to create this business that integrated the spiritual practice with the business strategy. I mean, all of this was about finding the joy and really allowing your joy to be your compass. I think that's such a powerful message. I agree because I underestimated that myself because I would look around and people would think that I'm a fool for doing it. I got so much flack about leaving engineering because engineers earn a lot. My major in MBA was marketing and international business. So I was taking like a step back in a way in terms of what people thought was my earning potential. Then once I got on that trajectory, I was like on this path to become a CEO. And then suddenly I'm like, that's not the right thing for me. I need to have my own business and corporate world isn't for me because it's trying to fit me into a mold that I cannot fit into. And that's the case with many people who have their own businesses or have the desire to start their businesses. Oh, yes. They just feel that all their gifts just aren't used or appreciated or valued in the corporate world, which is like, that's one of the systems that we, we are changing, right? But every single time, what people thought was like a stay back or a wrong decision for me, I had some self-doubt, obviously. I was wondering, will this work out? But at least I had some inner knowing and I was, I think, lucky enough to trust it because there was a time in my life where I didn't trust it, that intuition, that inner knowing. And I was just like, I made mistakes. But here in this long phase, and especially after my aunt's death, I was like, no, I cannot live my life based on somebody else's definition of success. I need to live my own life. I need to create my own life. That may, may not include money. That may, may not include being a CEO. That may or may not include being an engineer. But for me, I trusted that. And in hindsight, it seems like pivotal point. But in that moment, the decisions were so simple, which is why I'm a big proponent that simple shifts in your perspective and simple changes in how we make decisions, which decisions we make, and even the simplest actions, they can be healing for us. And we underestimate the healing power of practical actions, practical life, because we think spirituality has to be like this some woo-woo stuff that's just out there that's separate from our practical life. And that's not the case, because in hindsight, they sound like pivotal moments, which they are. But in that moment, I didn't know that. I think that is key, that the act of taking those small, concrete steps can be infused with such meaning and such purpose. It doesn't have to be this huge ethereal, you know, epiphany. It can be taking 11 days to express gratitude. That's not lost on me. And in fact, this interview will go live the week of American Thanksgiving. So the timing of this is perfect. But the fact that you took that seemingly small step of spending 11 days of expressing gratitude and thanks for the people in your life, and then that snowballed into something much bigger. It became the genesis of what's now your business. You know, first the Facebook statuses and then the blog, and then that allowed you to start a business to get clients And it all stemmed from the simple act of expressing gratitude for 11 days. That's such a powerful example of what you're sharing. And it goes to show that sometimes we don't even start because we think that we need the whole plan. We think that we need to see the destination. But energetic alignment tells us that you don't need to see the whole destination. In fact, you cannot see it. From this point, the way... It's a diversion. So for the podcast viewers, I'm basically showing like how something diverges. At one point, we have like a simple decision to make, but then the distance between those two trajectories keeps growing. So we don't need to see the whole path. We just need to see our next best action. And that is always available to us. Our intuition, our inner knowing, and whatever part of our logic is working with that inner knowing already tells us that there is something you need to do. For example, before I was let go from my job, at least for six months, I was contemplating about quitting my job, but I didn't. I didn't have the courage. And then I guess it worked out anyway. So (laughs) 
we know, but sometimes it takes, not sometimes, it almost always takes a lot of courage to then say, I'm okay with that uncertainty. Uncertainty is always going to be there. Some confusion is always going to be there. But all I need to know is my next best step. I will take it. It might be slightly out of my comfort zone, but I will take it and the next step will appear. Yes, I couldn't agree more. When we acknowledge the fact that each one of us has the gift of intuition, and when we learn how to tune into it and to follow those nudges that we get and to understand the language that our intuition speaks, because the way my intuition speaks to me may be different than how yours does to you. But when we know those signs for us, if we get a certain feeling, if we get a sense, if there's a thought that we just can't quite let go of and really acknowledging that is that's our inner wisdom communicating with us. And so then how do we want to respond? And you're exactly right. It is bravery in action to take those small steps that are aligned with our intuition, even if, and especially when they don't necessarily conform to societal standards. Yes. Moving away from engineering and into business and then from corporate world into your own business, that to the external viewer may look like, what are you doing? These are not the right decisions. But internally, you knew that that was in full alignment with your gifts and how you were meant to show up in the world. Absolutely. And honestly, I didn't even have these words at that time. I didn't think that was my intuition, like these internal nudges. I didn't even label it as intuition. I didn't know the words alignment. I didn't know the words love and light and any of the spiritual lingo. I just didn't know it. Growing up in India, spirituality is usually a part of your life. But it is such a regular part of life that I was interested in astrology. I was interested in palmistry. And I exposed myself to all those things. But the way spirituality sometimes is taught in the pop culture spirituality in the U.S., I just wasn't used to any of that wording. Some of it is really like cultural appropriation that I'm completely against. But some of it is a way of describing complex concepts. So labeling it is useful. Labeling it in some form is useful. And then we can dig down and say, okay, well, if this is called intuition, what is my way of working with my intuition? And then when we bring in my way into it, that's where then we actually experience the value that is into the spirituality, not just listening what everybody else is telling, but like, what is my way? And that's the self-exploration. And I really believe that as souls, this is one of our goals in our purposes of taking a birth as a human being is to explore how divinity expresses itself in a variety of ways. One of the ways being who we are. Yes. And one of the things that I think you do so beautifully is that you weave that into who we are and then also what we do, how we show up in the world and specifically with business. And I'd love to kind of pivot the conversation and talk a little bit more about your framework for how you do that. And I know the seven chakra system is an integral part of your work, certainly for yourself, but also the work that you do with your clients. I'd love to hear more about your framework. And for people who are not familiar with the seven chakras, maybe we should start with defining what those are and how they show up for people. So first of all, let me give you the right pronunciation of it. It's called chakra. Mm -hmm. It's not chakra or it's not chakra. And singular is chakra and plural is also chakra. So so chakra simply means a wheel or a gear, like a cog. That's what chakra means, something that rotates. The chakra system, as it is described, are simply archetypal energies, as they're described in ancient Indian wisdom. So seven chakra, they simply stand for seven archetypal energies that are always within us. In contrary to what you may have heard in the Western spiritual, like pop culture spiritual teachings, there is nothing open or closed or blocked within us. It's energy. It cannot be blocked. It cannot be closed. It's always flowing. It's just Is it flowing in a way that is balanced and aligned with you? Or is it flowing in a way that you cannot handle? Meaning it's misaligned with you. It's out of balance, right? So each of those chakras, they stand for certain archetypal energies. And if we listen to the original Sanskrit name, Sanskrit is an ancient Indian language. If we listen to the 
original names of this chakra, we get an understanding of what that archetypal energy is representing. For example, first chakra is Muladhar chakra. By the way, these are seven major chakra. They are more than that. But I really believe humanity hasn't even mastered these seven. So let's just first begin with that. Let's start with those, right? <laughs> let's start with those. And then we will expand or graduate into an advanced class. So first chakra is Muladhar chakra. Now you may have heard it as root. Now root by itself doesn't tell you much. But if you look at the word Muladhar, it's a composite word. Mula means root or foundation and Adhar means support. So this is the archetypal energy that describes itself as support to your foundation. So in this human form, we need some things to be supported, to feel supported in doing what we want to do in being who we are. This chakra is quite often interpreted as safety, but safety is just the bare minimum of it, meaning human beings need to feel physically, emotionally, mentally, and energetically safe in order to be who they are. That's just the bare minimum. But then it takes it beyond that because in order to create the support to your foundations, you got to take actions. So this in and of itself, at its really vibrant state, this is the energy of inspired aligned actions that basically create the support that you need in the physical world to live your spiritual purpose in the form that you are born in. So it's foundational. It's the foundation. So what it tells us is you cannot bypass human experience. You cannot bypass your interaction with the human world if you really want to feel supported as a spiritual being living a human existence. Which is why a lot of times if we see like stereotypical what people would label as light workers, we feel that they are not grounded. They feel they are not grounded. It's because they sometimes tend to bypass the human experience just so that they can connect with external realms. But what this chakra tells us is you cannot bypass it. In fact, you have to take proactive actions in order to create that kind of support and foundation. And because this is the part of our energy, what it also shows us is we will at any time have everything that we need to take our next best action. So that's where that internal trust comes in that, okay, even if I just take this action, that is going to create that big foundation. It's going to put that one brick into the foundation that I'm creating. Similarly, there are six other chakra, and we can understand their names and their energies. By the way, on my website, if you go on my website, there is a free mini course on seven chakra and business. And take that mini course, download it. There are videos in it that will tell you what each of the chakra means in Sanskrit, what that archetypal energy is, and it will give you examples of simple actions that you can take to heal and nurture that energy within you. Perfect. We will have a link to that in the show notes too. So definitely check out the show notes and download that mini course. Yes. So that's how then what I look at then, for example, if a client comes to me and one, this chakra is one of the most wounded in our world, by the way, since it's a chakra, it's a wheel. It has not just the speed that it flows at, but it also has a direction. You may have remember this concept learning in physics that there is a scalar and there is a vector. And vector has not just the magnitude, but the direction. So chakra is a vector, meaning it has direction and speed. So if you are taking actions, but in the wrong direction, they are not healing for you. Meaning, let's say that I realized in my head that I need to start my business. I wanted to quit my job, but instead of seeing how I can start my business and taking action towards it, what I was doing is looking for another job. So that action may feel good. It may feel like this is the action that is going to create you support that you need, but it's moving in the wrong direction. So that energy is going in the wrong direction. That's not the action that creates support. That's not the action that creates nurturing and healing for you, or it doesn't create expansion. That really resonates with me. In fact, I'm thinking back to when I started my own business and 
I had it in my head that in order to be a successful coach, I had to be a corporate coach. And so I created a logo, I created a brand, I created a website that was just about the most corporate looking thing you could ever imagine. (laughs) And not that there is anything wrong with corporate coaches. We need really good corporate coaches out there. I just don't happen to be one of them. And yet I was taking action. I was doing all of these things in my business, but it was clearly in the wrong direction because it was taking me further away from me. And so to think about that experience as an example of the vector kind of heading in the wrong direction really makes sense to me because the minute I stopped and said, who are you? What are you doing here? You're getting lost in your own business. That was when I was able to change course, change directions and come back home. Right. When we continue taking some of those wrong direction actions, if we take them for long enough, we start doubting our own worthiness. I have seen so many people who take the wrong actions and wrong meaning in a different direction or at a different speed. What happens is this chakra tells us that it builds into the next chakra, which is Swadhishthan chakra. Swadhishthan is another composite word in Sanskrit. Swa means my own. And Adhishthan means sacred seat or sacred throne. So what it tells us is just because you exist, you have a sacred seat that is reserved only for you by the universe. What that means is you are a unique expression of the divine. It is your biggest joy, biggest service to the world. And in a way, your personal responsibility to your oversoul to occupy that seat, that sacred seat. So if action energy is out of balance, then it directly feeds into this self-worth energy where we start questioning, oh, I must not be an entrepreneurship material, or there must be something wrong with me that other corporate coaches create these logos and they're successful, but I'm not able to create that type of success. So we start doubting ourselves. And then ultimately, again, with the chakra, if one energy is out of balance, everything starts falling out of balance. Good news is that if one is in balance and we start bringing that in balance, everything else starts falling in place. So when my clients come to me, they usually have like primary imbalances in one or two chakra. But if I give them symptoms, they start recognizing, oh, I have this symptom and I have this symptom and I have this symptom. And all seven chakras seem to be out of balance. But if we dig down deeper, it's only one or two. Because they create the primary imbalance that then shows up as symptoms of all the chakras imbalance. And once we start healing at that primary stage, at the root, like really heat it at the root and start healing that energy, everything starts falling in place. And what my clients perceive it is like instant transformation. It doesn't feel instant. My program is like 16 weeks, but like at 12th week, it starts feeling like everything is now falling in place. And it feels like, oh my gosh, what was this sudden transformation? But it wasn't sudden. It was just that you were taking care of that primary energy so much so well that then everything was falling in place. But coming back to our previous discussion, what happens with that Muladhar Chakra, since we are on that, let's just finish that thought. We see our value in the amount of actions we take and the type of actions we take, instead of seeing our value in who we are. And that's one of the major symptoms of imbalance in that chakra that I see in entrepreneurs. That they think, oh, I should be on Instagram. If I'm not on Instagram, there's something wrong with me. You are seeing like you being on Instagram, taking that action is what gives you value. And it's not. What gives you value is who you are. Or sometimes we keep ourselves so busy. That was my story that I kept myself so busy because I would think that if I'm not busy, number one, I won't be successful, which was money mindset issue. But if I'm not busy, I'm lazy. And being lazy is wrong. Sitting in silence is wrong. That means like I'm not productive. So those were my stories. So I kept on toiling myself, creating extra work that didn't need to be there just because I was seeing my value in the actions. And the problem was extra actions in the wrong directions was what was creating imbalance. The moment I reduced my actions, and brought focus in my actions, I actually started making more money. Which makes sense. I mean, really, when you describe it like that, it's one of those things where it's simple, but not easy. 
because you do have to go in and do the work and do the healing. And I think you've also touched on a bit of a productivity paradox too, where we do have to be taking action in order to create what we want in our lives. But when we allow those actions to then turn around and define who we are or our self-worth, then we move ourselves out of alignment. And so it sounds like there's really this balance that we need to find as entrepreneurs of what does right action look like, the direction and the speed, and then how can I take action without grasping onto it so tightly that it becomes who I am, that my identity is completely about what I do or what I produce. That's, I feel like, my challenge right now in my point of my journey is learning how to hold that loosely so that I'm still taking those actions, but not getting too absorbed into it or by it. Right. That's where the healing is. Because once we start recognizing our value comes from not just action, that is one of the ways. And there are six other ways in which our value comes in. And even more than that, our value is in our unique way of being, meaning our dharma. And that has thousands of perspective. The last chakra, Sahasra chakra, it translates as thousand petaled, meaning there are thousands of aspects of you. It is impossible to put it in words to understand what makes one person valuable. So once we start understanding that I just have to trust that I'm valuable without doing anything else, and that's where the healing is, because in order to develop that kind of trust, first of all, this thought to even sink in, Like for me, for the longest time, it didn't even sink in. I was like, what do you mean I'm valuable by being who I am? Like I am always who I am. I wasn't, but I didn't recognize that, right? So first let that thought sink in. And then on top of it, when we recognize our powers in our energy and start seeing how just us being us through that we should the meaning, especially pure expression, that is one of the chakra especially pure expression of who we are is when we are going to help the world, we are going to help ourselves, we are going to create the life that we want, then we recognize, oh, so my value isn't in the money that I make. My value isn't in the actions that I take. My value isn't in the relationships I have. My value is simply in my energy, who I am. Once that starts sinking in, and this is the whole spiritual journey, once that starts sinking in, then automatically the byproduct is us finding the balance and recognizing, well, this action isn't aligned with me. I'm going to give myself the gift of not pursuing it. I'm going to feel good enough to say that just because somebody else says that I should do this, there is no need to do this because I trust my own alignment in recognizing that this is not the right action for me. And then automatically the balance comes in because then you are taking an action as an expression not as something you need to do. So you don't take it because that action is going to create your value. You take the action because this is your way of expressing something. So you show up on the video because it is your way right now to sell your product. It comes from within. It's not that, oh, I have to now sell my products. I have to launch and now I have to make money because without that, I wouldn't feel successful. So you don't show up on the video or a sales call thinking that that's what is going to validate your value to you. So I have to have it versus you show up as like, oh, that would be fun to do. Now I want to launch my next product. So I'm just going to show up on the sales call, tell everything about it. And then let's see who comes to me. And then there is no attachment of the outcome because when we are taking those next best action with the trust that it is leading us to where we need to go we release the attachment with having a certain outcome because we recognize whatever outcome comes will be in alignment with me because I'm taking the actions that are in alignment with me, right? And when I take some misaligned actions, I will learn and I will tweak and I deserve to give myself the gift of that journey as well. Like it's okay to make mistakes. If you're all born enlightened, what's the point of being born? Right, why are we here? Why are we here? Yeah, why are we here? So we need to give ourselves the gift of that journey too. And I think in the business world, that's just majorly missing. Everybody makes you think, and we buy into that, that, oh, I'm chasing six figures, seven figures, eight figures. I kid you not, I heard nine figures this year. 
don't even get me started on that. So we chase these outcomes instead of saying, okay, what is my joy? What is my expression? And let's just give myself that journey and let's see what happens out of it. And sometimes it feels like, oh, well, what if I don't make money from it? What if, I, yes, all those logical concerns are there, but what if you trust a little bit more, just a tad bit more, you don't have to expand your comfort zone of trust this much, but just a tad bit more than what you're trusting. Just take that action along with all the other logical actions you think you should be taking. And let's see where that takes you. Like right now, almost every single one of my actions is aligned. It wasn't the case seven years ago when I first started writing a blog. Almost every single one of my actions was misaligned. That's why taking that one action of gratitude feels like, oh, gosh, that was a pivotal point, right? Yes. It feels like a pivotal point because I chose alignment. Whereas now, all my life, everything that I'm doing, for the most part, feels aligned. I am just so in awe of just this conversation that we've had today. It's something I will be reflecting on over the next several days, I can already tell there's so many gems in what you shared today. I have no doubt that those who are listening to our conversation right now will feel the same way. And I strongly suspect many of them are seeing this as the start of their own journeys too. And so I'd love to close by having you let people know where they can connect with you to deepen their own exploration and really understand how they can bring their spirituality and their journey into their business as well, because that really is just kind of your sweet spot. So how can people continue to connect with you? First of all, a way to always connect with me is my website, my first name, last name.com, manasikakre.com. That website is for bridge walkers. So if you are a bridge walker, meaning analytical, critical thinker, fascinated by spirituality, that website is turning out to be like a resource for bridge walkers, because there isn't much information available on who a bridge walker is. A lot of information is what I have channeled. And just because it's channeled doesn't mean it's applicable to everybody, right? Because a channeler's experience is based on their own lived experience. But if you see that that's what resonates with you, then explore the whole website. There is a blog there. As of recording, there is not a podcast that is coming out, but hopefully by November or latest by December, I'm launching a podcast of my own, Yes, which is all about discussions for Bridgewalker entrepreneurs. So we are going to talk about entrepreneurship and Bridgewalkers operate at the intersection of spirituality, practical action and systemic change. So the conversations are going to be centered around that. And if that's what is exciting for you, then subscribe to the podcast, find it out. You will find it also on the website. I am on Facebook now. I have a group for bridge walkers, but honestly, Facebook feels misaligned at this point. So I will be looking for something else. So the best way to stay in touch is to sign up for the email list. And two ways you can do that very easily and receive something in return is also download the seven chakra and business mini course. If you're an entrepreneur, if you're not an entrepreneur, just a bridge walker and still wondering where do I begin my journey? then there is a beginner's guide for bridge walkers. Download that and that will get you started on what is our purpose at this time and how you uncover your own purpose. So I would say website, podcast, and email list. Those are the best ways to stay in touch with me. And then every time I open my mentorship, which honestly, at this time, it is open. When this podcast comes out, I would have started accepting applications for my one-on-one mentorship called Bridgewalker Visionaries Incubator. So if you want to work with me one-on-one and really dive deep into seven chakra and how they affect your business, then come get me. You will find that information on my website too. Excellent. We will make sure that we have links in the show notes to all of that, but Manasi, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for being present today. I've so enjoyed getting to connect with you. Absolutely. Thanks for great questions. And it was a pleasure having this discussion with you. Wow. I have to admit, as a podcaster, there are very few times where I am struck speechless. I'm usually pretty good about being able to share my thoughts and my feelings and my insights But there was just something about that interview where Manasi just kept dropping truth bomb after truth bomb. It literally took my breath away. And I just had to sit and take it all in and listen. And I really meant it. I'm going to be replaying this conversation again 
because there are just so many gems in what she had to share. I'm so honored that she was able to come on the show. I hope that you found her story and her wisdom to be valuable as well. And definitely head on over to her website, monaseekakade.com. We'll have links in the show notes. And be sure to download that free mini course she has. I have downloaded it and I can tell you she is just so generous with her knowledge and her wisdom. And it is such a lovely introduction to the chakra system. So definitely head on over, download that and stay up to date on all of the amazing things that she is creating in the world. All right, my friends, that is it for me. If you are listening to this the week it drops, and if you are in the United States, I wish you a very happy Thanksgiving. And regardless of where in the world you are, please know that I am thankful for you. And not just on Thanksgiving, but every day of the year. I am so grateful to be connected with you and to be serving you through this podcast. And so please know that when I sit down at my Thanksgiving dinner with my family this year, I will be expressing my gratitude for you. So enjoy the rest of your week. And until next time, my name is Lee Shea McDonough, reminding you to get out there and show the world what it means to be a coach with clarity. Thanks for listening to the Coach with Clarity podcast. Be sure to visit coachwithclarity.com for detailed show notes and bonus material just for podcast listeners. Did you enjoy today's podcast? If so, then I invite you to check out the Coach with Clarity membership program exclusively for intuitive coaches ready to master both the business and the craft of coaching. You'll discover monthly hot seat coaching calls, Q&A sessions, and guest expert trainings, as well as the most supportive and innovative community of coaches out there. If you're ready to take your coaching to the next level, then you're ready for the Coach with Clarity membership. Learn more at coachwithclarity.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the show wherever you listen to your podcasts. And if you know a coach who could use a little clarity in their work and life, then please share this episode with them. I'll be back next week with another episode of the Coach with Clarity podcast. Until then, go show the world what it means to be a coach with clarity.